Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at Fertility Plus. Today, I'm going to talk to you about an interesting case, and that's about persistently thick endometrium. We have spent a lot of time and effort trying to look at thin endometrium, but have you looked at what causes this thick endometrium and what's its impact on fertility? So, so let's uh, try and go back to a case presentation. And, and what I've, and having come back after a, a brief gap, what I've decided is to get through by discussing cases, but also try and get more reviews done and shorter reviews done so that we can uh, start populating uh, the teaching platform a lot better. So let's plan to start this. And this was a case of uh, thick endometrium. It's uh, one of the treatments I uh, offered to my, one of my patients. And we found this an extremely challenging issue. And in fact, one of which uh, a lot of us tried to understand what can we do to treat this extremely thick endometrium. So uh, this is a 34 year old lady with unexplained infertility. She had three stimulated IUI treatment cycles and had two IVF with ICSI treatment before she came to see me. Three blastocyst transfers, fresh and frozen transfers, and at every appointment with stimulation, fresh or frozen, the endometrium crossed 20 millimeter. And as usual, what tends to happen is there's a fear of endometrial hyperplasia. Again, this is not a PCOS woman. So in PCOS women or PCOM women, what you will see is you will see uh, that the endometrium thickens faster. And that's again, I, I say that's a, a way of determining whether there is an estrogen excess uh, coming through. Uh, three hysteroscopies over three years, none showing endometrial hyperplasia. Now, again, this is a non-PCOS, normal FSH LH and, L and AMH also uh, within the normal range of 8.52, not very high. So she came to see me and we said, let's start the stimulation. We froze, uh, you know, four blastocysts. But again, the endometrium was between 25 and 30 millimeter. So what would we, I suggest, I said, well, why don't we for a frozen transfer uh, downregulate? And I gave her a long acting GNH analog. The lining became thin. So at least we can say there's no organic pathology because you ended up having a thin endometrium. Uh, and that's one way of, uh, of looking. And I learned this a long time ago with one of my earlier teachers in India, and what she did is uh, for a lady with repeated polyps where, he, where, uh, where the histology came completely normal, she gave one injection of Zolodex or Prostam and the lining thinned out. So very much this is a hormonal increase. And then I started on estrogen of two milligram of Proganova, the endometrium can climb to 20 millimeter. Uh, eventually after two attempts, we said, let's put back the embryos and the endometrium was at 18.2 millimeter, it was negative. And again, I got scared and I said, well, let's do a hysteroscopy. Again, normal, no endometrial hyperplasia, no ATP. So I said, well, let's do an ERA test. Let's at least get an answer. But I said, let's not give you Proganova, but let's do it on a uh, stimulated cycle uh, with mild deficit stimulation of 75 of HMG triggered when the uh, lead follicle is 22, endometrium was 24 millimeter. ERA test done, HCG given at 9 a, uh, uh, a.m. or rather I'll say uh, 9 p.m. Um, well, sorry, I think this was 9 a.m., I'm correct. And 165 hours later, we did the ERA test at 8 a.m. And so the gap was 165 hours. And the ERA report came receptive to 166 hours plus or minus three hours. So see, when you do the ERA test on a, uh, a, a treatment, which is a, a medicated cycle, you get it at around 120 plus or minus three hours. Remember, you're using HCG. So it's HCG plus about 36 hours that goes in. So what you are trying to 
uh, followers you're going to give at CG and your, your implantation window will come in that range of around 165 to 166 hours. And what it showed is it showed that the endometrium was receptive at this stage. So uh, what did we do? And we said, well, we have not found the cause. And so I suggested, uh, let me try something different. So I said, let me use letrozole. Again, remember this was, I had downregulated this woman and the pituitary was not working. So what am I using letrozole for? I'm using letrozole for, again, look, using it, its uh, aromatase, aromatase inhibitor, uh, you know, quality and lowering the peripheral estrogen level. And I don't think I'd read it anywhere. It's not been tried. And I said, why don't we try it for once? So I gave her HMG, downregulated, 10 milligram of letrozole. Remember, letrozole is not working at a pituitary level at all in this case now. And trigger when lead follicle was 20, three follicles were there. HCG was given at 10 uh, uh, AM. And if you have a look at the endometrium, the endometrium was 8.3 millimeter. Phenomenal. And I couldn't believe it. And I said, well, this is the first time I've used letrozole in on a downregulated state using its unique property as an aromatase inhibitor to be able to lower the endometrium. So what's it telling us? It's telling us that probably any external estrogen, any estrogen that has been secreted by the ovary, the endometrium is going to be thicker. Uh, again, endometrium ET was then 166 hours later. Uh, again, looking at the ERA test, two embryos were transferred and the HCG or was given the day of transfer. The progesterone on that day was 300 nanomole per liter. That's very high. And I continued uh, a single dose of uh, subcutaneous progesterone and cyclogest twice a day. Again, twin pregnancy, she's delivered at 37 weeks. So what are the lessons do we learn here? Again, an interesting case, you're seeing a thick ethnometrium. There is no pathology, confirm that always. There is no atypia. It's not a PCOS patient. And you've ruled all that out. You've downregulated. You've confirmed that it's entirely hormonal. Add a bit of letrozole. And that adding a bit of letrozole eliminated the over response of estrogen, that any peripheral estrogen was reduced and the endometrium was thin. And again, this is something which you can use in your practice, something which makes you think differently. And that's what we want or I, I, these, these lectures tend to do. I know it's been a long time since I've been off it and I think there've been various reasons, uh, but I, I, I feel I am back with new ideas and new teaching modalities. And I'm hoping that you know, with the next year, I'll come up with slightly more teachings. Thank you very much.